Hello Year 3, it's me, Miss Cooney, and today we're going to be doing some art together. So let's get ready for art with Miss Cooney. So, last week your task was to create a fact file about George O'Keefe, and you guys were amazing. You found out loads about her and some really interesting facts too. She was a very interesting lady, I'm sure you will agree. So, things that we found out, she was born in Wisconsin in America, she was one of seven children, and she got her name, or she was named after, her grandfather. Now, Georgia knew from a very early age that she wanted to be an artist. So she went and studied in lots of different places and did lots of different artists and studied lots of different techniques. But she never really found a style or technique that she loved. And so she became a bit disheartened by this because she wasn't studying or learning the things that she wanted to do. So she was influenced by an artist called Arthur Wesley Dow who said that all art had to be was something beautiful on a page. And so Georgia decided to create her own style and her own way of working. And this is later called American Modernism. And it combines abstract art and realism into one piece. And so you can see this in a lot of Georgia's works. She studies um, really intricate things like landscapes and flowers and creates detailed pictures So today we're going to be looking at um, a couple of pictures by George O'Keefe. So in your pack you'll find so one red oriental poppies by George O'Keefe and the other one white and flower by George O'Keefe. Now you'll notice that both of these images have very different colour palettes. Okay, So one which we call warm and one which is cold. And this is what you'll find a lot of in George O'Keefe's work. So I want you to have a think. What colours do you think may be warm and what colours do you think may be cold? Well done. So oriental poppies is our warm colour palette and white and flower is our cool colour palette. Now, warm colours are things that make us think of warmth and fires, so things like reds, oranges, yellows. And our cool colour palette are things like blues, greens and purples, things that make us think of a bit more cold. So we're going to be recreating um, some of those images with those colour palettes. In a minute, I will show you a sped up version of me creating my version of flower and white or white and flower. I'll talk you through some of the techniques I used and then it will be over to you. Now, I use watercolours, but do not panic if you don't have them in your house. You can use paints, colouring pencils, whatever you have. OK, so let's have a go. Stop. Just to let you know, before I started, I had watercolours, paintbrushes, water and kitchen roll. And then I got started. First, I sketched onto my page where all of my petals and shapes were going to go. So I looked really carefully where each of the lines were and how big roughly each shape was going to be. So I took my time and just built it up. Remember, press really lightly with your pencil. My pencil lines could have been a bit lighter myself. So really nice and light and give your basic shape. Then I started with one section and I started to add my lightest colours first. And then I thought I could build it up. So my lightest colour and I washed it on with quite a bit of water so that I could get that light, lovely blue, white colour. I then started to build up my darker blue around the edge using a dark blue and a darkish green colour. I sort of mixed them together and making sure that I dried off my paintbrush um, quite often so that I didn't get smudges or rips all over the place. I then built up and worked around the image. So again, starting with my lighter colours and building up to my dark and then adding some yellow in. But be careful because yellow and blue makes green and we don't want green all over our image, okay? So maybe wait for your blues to dry a little bit before you add your yellow in and build up or you could start with your yellow. Then, once I was happy with the general colour, I could start adding in detail and adding in a bit more 
depth to my work. So I got the end of my paintbrush and started to go and do some outlines or I got a really thin paintbrush as well and did some of those outlines with my paintbrush. And I just kept building up slowly but surely, each time adding a little bit more colour so that I didn't start off with loads and then have nowhere to go back to if I made a mistake. Here we go, here is my final piece. As you can see, it's still a little bit wet, but I'm very, very proud of myself there. Um, so as you can see, I've built up my dark colours and my light colours um, to create that image. Now, I cannot wait to see yours. Um, I'll be looking forward to seeing them. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And um, as I said, I cannot wait to see your um takes on Georgia Keith's artwork and I look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, have a lovely, lovely day, year three. Goodbye.